Uh, going over to the political part of the podcast, you have Vivek roasting the U.S. boxing policy that's going to allow biological men to compete with biological women, which we would previously call abuse, illegal, but nowadays it's a different time. Now, Vivek has a, he's responding to a New York Post article. The New York Post article says, quote, U.S. boxing slammed for new transgender policy that allows biological men to compete against women. And they have a picture of a really jacked, as youth might say, really bulky biological man with woman hairstyle punching the absolute bejesus of a more petite looking woman in the boxing ring. And Vivek responded, it says, quote, we used to call this violence against women. Now we call it a victory for trans rights. The trans cult is a mental health epidemic in our country and it needs to stop, unquote. And Within the first 24 hours, that got 1.8 million views and 46,000 likes, which is fascinating. If you're watching the whole show, we just talked about Mark Cuban praising DEI. Well, his company really doesn't have much in terms of the people on the court. And yet, I mean, um, Mark Cuban got 22 million views, but he got about 42,000 likes. So infinitely better ratio to say the least for Vivek Ramaswamy and I suspect most of the comments will be overall supportive of that but let's dive in and find out again all these statistics were written down after 24 hours of, re of the actual recording and again it's 1.8 million views 46,000 likes and going to the top comment Common Sense Prevails has a comic strip or rather a comic caricature and he says, quote, I agree. Here's a little joke to bring a chuckle during these intense times, unquote. And it's a hammerhead shark with that's dressed up as a mummy for Halloween. And then there's another shark with a hammer. What do you call it? A little rope is tied to the hammer to his head. And he says, how can you tell I'm trans, unquote. They got 231 likes on X, or as fewer and fewer people are calling it Twitter. Fascinatingly enough, there's a, I, need, I should do another poll on LinkedIn to see what people are calling it these days. Rob Seffer says, quote, as a anthropologist, I can constantly determine the difference between the sexes from skeletal remains, in most cases from across the room. That says nothing about the differences. That says nothing about the differences in muscle mass and other physical advantages that makes this woke cross sex combat sports unfair. Unquote, getting 601 likes. Paul Suziza says, quote, gender dysphoria is a mental illness. Until the left accepts the reality, the situation will only get worse. Women are under assault by men pretending to be them, and it has to stop, unquote, getting 302 likes. Let's see here. The conservative alternate says, quote, imagine Mike Tyson or Francis uh, oh, uh, Nagano. Maybe got that right. Putting on a wig and competing in women's boxing. Yeesh, unquote, getting 27 likes. And again, depending on the sports, and there's a huge debate. Oh, this is a huge cultural and political debate in the United States, well, globally as well. In some sports, they debate, they could try to make it fair by measuring testosterone levels or density of bone or muscle mass. And some, you don't even have to have, what's the nice way of making this moderately family friendly? You don't need to take drugs to decrease your testosterone or chop off body parts. And some, you literally can just dress up differently with all the inherent vet and overwhelming advantages that you have i'm it'll be interesting to see how it plays out in the boxing now someone by the name of moderate severe says quote what's most sickening about this is that we have to tell people this is sickening unquote getting 53 likes michael urban says quote this is disgusting u.s boxing should be ashamed the real woman should refuse to participate unquote getting 74 likes so Vernus says quote south park nailed this one and it is the South Park episode where you had a bodybuilding biological man beating the absolute crap out of the biological women in, what is it, the strong women competition? And I got 77 likes. Scrolling down here. Iggy Normus says, quote, one of the best drugs that America can make right now is to establish a 
or no, sorry, one of the best moves that America could make right now is to establish a trans only all drugs allowed MMA league. We could heal finally, unquote, getting 25 likes. Now, we've had this suggestion multiple times just in the comments throughout this debate of Bob Schumann could be in Bob in sports. I, I don't think that will ever be a realistic solution because of the ideological and cultural differences and mindsets. So the people who are very much pro having biological men beat up biological women in these sports, they believe that there's no different. They believe they the trans men really are, are women. That's their thought process. So they would still be insulted if you tried to make a special category for them because, again, they think they are already the other category. So that's why, I mean, many people have suggested that, but... I don't think those, they would not accept it because they're so mentally, they're hell-bent in that ideal. Now, going back to the comments section, let's see here, do one or two more. Where did it go here? There it is. Ghost Rider 505 says, quote, that's a career-ending move for any female boxer to step in a ring with a trans male boxer, unquote, getting four likes. Let's see. Interestingly enough, not a, how many comments were there total for this one? That's 863 comments. That's a lot. Not as many comments with like hundreds of thousands of likes as we normally see. A lot of comments getting between 0 and 25 or 30 likes. Let's see. Jim simply says it's broadly incentivized in society, unquote, getting two likes. And again, that is, let's see here. That's the, that's the other thing is there are huge incentives to do this. If you're a failed male athlete, you could dominate the women's category. We've seen this time and time. One of the most famous prolific examples being Leah Thomas, who what was it was the 400 and I think 68th male collegiate athlete for swimming. So 468th ranked to number one just by putting on actually a different swimsuit. Do they wear the same? Putting on a women's swimsuit, changing in the women's locker room. So that's a huge incentive. You go from 400th. Fit 480th place to first place just by going in a different locker room. That's and again, society is not only encouraging, but they're not just allowing, but they're encouraging it in many cases, giving them scholarships. So yeah, there's there's multiple incentive mechanisms at play as well, and it, as well as this pharma law, the uh, pharmaceutical industry, where again, this is opening up. Like, this is creating a category for them of new products to sell, and then creating a new audience to or uh, not audience, a new customer base for them to sell to as well. Sam Force says, quote, I am, L- I am LGBT member and I approve this message, unquote, getting one like. Naya Nikini says, quote, their strengths are not the same, unquote, getting two likes. Now, interestingly enough, we'll see if DeSantis, oh, let's see one more. Colin Silver says, quote, Vivek is speaking the truth. Do you agree with him, unquote, getting six likes. So it'll be interesting to see if other political candidates jump on this message. It's, they've only brought up the topic, I think, once or twice during the Republican nominee debates. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is one of the biggest cultural topics and debates in modern American society. I'm surprised they haven't talked about it more so that Republican voters can know exactly where the candidates stand on all these different issues and see what kind of nuances. Or if they're just, I was going to say, the only disappointing thing is, you know, during all those debates, if they just dodge the question and have some superfluous just BS answer, it doesn't really tell you anything, which unfortunately is a lot of politicians these days on the left and the right. So let me know in the comments. Do you think this will actually help push Vivek up in the political polls as he's, let's see here, as he continues to struggle behind the other candidates? Again, Trump is way ahead over everyone, but there's a lot of people wondering, will the government shut him down? Will the government stop him from running? Some states are actually taking Trump off the poll or off the ballot altogether, so the lawsuits are, they're being filed all over. And again, Vivek is still consistently around 4.8 to 5% in the polls. Nikki Haley is... She passed DeSantis for a New York minute last week, but she's now below him again, usually around 11%. DeSantis is around 12%. Trump is all the way around 60 to 62%. Chris Christie is usually around 3%. And Asa Hutchinson, he's usually around 0.6, although lately he's been actually 0.8%. So again, it'll be interesting to see, you know, when the rubber hits the pavement, so say, when people actually start voting for a nominee. I mean... I mean, Vivek is using social media very aggressively and very articulate in his, most of his responses. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, does it translate to the votes and really, really help at the end of the day? Let me know in the comments. As always, it'll be fascinating to hear what you have to say.
Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Again, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of January. So if you click that button, I greatly appreciate it. Also, if you give me a comment, it's a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Leaving me a thumbs up is a great way to help with the YouTube and Rumble algorithms. So the video hopefully gets shared more and more. Lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.